because it's not needed anymore. I dream that one day, the Me Too movement will not exist because it's not needed anymore. Now, I can see that some, possibly most of you may think, I'm some crazy white Jewish I was clueless. No way this could ever happen. But that's the thing about dreams. They reveal a part of your soul. I don't just dream it. I want to see it happen. I have taken the first step on the staircase. I have set my hand in friendship to all who will shake it to join me and eradicate the H word. All of us can identify people who have to walk away on that staircase. And sometimes the sheer quantity can be overwhelming. A lack of understanding of our neighbors leads to fear and loathing. Fear leads to the H word. The H word leads to acts of violence. If we are ever to remove the age word from our society, it must start with pledging to not use the age word in our speech, as I have done. Walk your body search the wall. I challenge all who are present today to join me in a simple move to eradicate the age word. Just don't say it. Our words can move. Our words can heal. What choice do you make when you leave this building? Shut up. Remain standing for the singing now. The anthem. With every voice singing. Let me have
in this community. Uh, racial disparities when, when it comes to economics, when it comes to housing, when it comes to education, when it comes to health outcomes. All these things are really important because if you don't measure it, you don't know where you need to go. So he's given a lot of us in policy making and elected officials uh, a pathway, a goal, something that we need to shoot for as we, as we learn these things. So uh, I'm delighted to be here today, delighted to be with Majestic, someone we partner with all the time, Majestic Lane, um, in the mayor's office, Mayor Perdue and I work very closely to try to make sure that Pittsburgh and Allegheny County is a community for all. It needs to be a community in which everybody moves forward. Because as the rabbi taught us uh, just a few months ago, love is stronger than hate. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Jesse Lane. Um, I'm to serve as Deputy Chief of Staff and also Chief of the Very Long Term Mayor Bill Peduto. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, the mayor sent his regards. And, you know, I was sitting here really thinking about what does it mean to be a grown man here in the And it, it caused me to think about when we think about Dr. King or what these young people are taught to about Dr. King. I would argue to stop it. And you hear, I have a dream, and you hear, don't judge a person by the content of their character, and you, and you hear these, these words. And that's what often defines Dr. King for so many people. But I had the opportunity to travel to the boys' homes, travel to Atlanta, and talk to people. And what, you, what I want to talk about quickly today is the things that Dr. King talked about beyond I have a desire, I have a dream speech that still resonates today around justice. We have to remember that Dr. King was killed in 1968 in solidarity with sanitation workers fighting for a wage, which is the same issues that we find ourselves with um, in service workers today. When we talk about inequality, those were the same issues in poverty, right? Later in his, later in his life, we're talking about the role of poverty. And these are issues that still we tangle with to this day. Um, and so, when you think about the prison industrial complex or even uh, war, these, again, issues that Dr. King tangled with, that we still find ourselves tangling with. So there's many things that we can take from his work, but one thing I think it's important to take from his work is that we all have to continue to, you know, keep that drum of the justice, to keep that beat, to keep together, you know, what we learned from the tree of life, uh, and there is so much more that this bird can be stronger than anyone. We have to come together and keep humanity at the center of our God. Dr. King kept humanity at the center of our God, and only by doing that can we see justice together. And I think what you see today with the solidarity between uh, the Jewish community, the African American community, which is a historic relationship, is an example of that. And as we continue to work together through legislation, through policy, and often through the love that we have to share together, we can continue to keep that drum beat for justice together. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. And now to learn more about the Tom Major for Justice Award, Tony J. Thompson was the division chair of the Home Best Brown Division of the Allegheny County Bar Association. We'll come to tell us more about this award and more about the Home all right, good morning again. I'm actually filling in where Elizabeth Hughes, who was unable to make it, was going to read her prepared remarks. Welcome. My sincerest apologies for being unable to attend. The Home Forest Brown Division Drum Major for Justice Award is presented to an individual or organization recognize those who perpetuate the convictions of Dr. King in making justice, equality, and opportunity a reality for all people. The name of the award originates from one of Dr. King's final sermons about a eulogy that might be given in the event of his death. His wishes for how he wanted to be remembered are reflected in his words that you see on the front of our program. This year's award recipient 
exemplifies the ideals of Dr. King and his unwavering commitment to justice, equality, and opportunity. Dr. Larry E. Davis has answered the call as the champion of all of these ideals. Dr. Davis was the first African American in any discipline to be awarded tenure at Washington University in St. Louis, where he was a professor of the School of Social Work and Psychology and the holder of the E. Desmond Lee Chair in Ethnic and Racial Diversity. In 2001, Dr. Davis was recruited to the University of Pittsburgh, where he served as Dean of the School of Social Work until 2017. He holds the Donald M. Henderson Chair and is the founding director of the Center on Race and Social Problems, which conducts applied social science research on race, ethnicity, and color. The center was the first of its kind to be created in any American school of social work. His full bio is available in the program. Through his research and writing and his legacy in creating the center, Dr. Davis provides us with the tools and the foundation to initiate difficult conversations about the role race plays in almost every aspect in society and its impact on access to education, employment opportunities, and justice. Without these crucial conversations born of these works, we cannot affect change and justice remains out of reach. At this time, I ask Dr. Larry Davis to come forward to accept the 2019 Drum Major for Justice Award. Honor to receive this award from the 
the whole way that's proud of you. Yours has been an organization that has been at the forefront of change. Indeed, your group has been a champion of securing the rights and guarantees to each of us under the Constitution of the United States. I'm also very proud to receive this award in honor of Dr. King. Like everyone here this morning, that is, those of us who are old enough to remember, I remember exactly what I was and what I was today Dr. King was assassinated. I was at that time a senior at Michigan State University. And because I was part of the black student group, I was afforded the opportunity to attend Dr. King's funeral and was part of his funeral procession. We walked behind the his casket Rested in a wooden wagon drawn by two great leaders. It was hard to believe that was over 50 years ago. Oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> 50 years ago, and still so much about the king's dreams and remains unfulfilled. We are all familiar with the disappointing statistics over which this friend is going to show. School racial segregation is almost at the same level it was in 1954. High school graduation rates for African Americans are barely 60%. While school expulsion rates for black youth are four to seven times that of other students. A black man with no criminal record is less likely to be called back for employment than a white man with a criminal record. And the national projection is that a third of all black men will be incarcerated at some point in their life. And despite kind of employment rates for the nation, African Americans persistently experience twice that rate that of twice. Since the 1950s, income has remained at only about blacks about 60% of that twice. The blacks have roughly five to ten cents in net worth for every dollar of five Americans. For sure Strives for racial justice and equality has been made. But in recent years, two things have become painfully clear. One is that the problem of racism in this country is more deeply rooted than most of us have thought. And two, racism is more resistant to eradication than most of us believe it would be. Still, I have no doubt that uh, Dr. King would admonish us to continue on with his poor march towards his racial justice and equality. So let each of us now here this morning renew our vows to our part to remain active in this noble struggle as a struggle to bring about a more just society. Let us now slip into complacency as a function of the many values and benefits which life has afforded some of us. Your efforts to honor and extend the civil rights status of a former S. Brown by the government program to assist the African American community and important contributions to the region of our region of the government. <coughs> Furthermore, your advocacy in protecting the political and civil rights of people of African descent and your assistance to local law schools to support our continued efforts towards achieving a more just society. For as Dr. King has stated, 
Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. So once again, I want to sincerely thank all of you for your attendance this morning and the Homer International Association for selecting me to receive the Dr. Martin. Yeah.
It is my distinct honor to present to you the 20th anniversary legacy of the league, the Pittsburgh Curry, and the New Pittsburgh Curry. I'm here to accept, on his behalf, of Ashley Johnson, the average of the league. Thank you. 
such devoted members of our community. Um, and my friend Kim Brown, past president of the Allegheny County Bar Association, uh, says this, and she's right when she says this. When she has a moral issue or an ethical issue to deal with, she asks herself, what would Josh Johnson do? <laughs> and those are words to live Amen. on. Amen. I'd also like to take, take a moment to thank all of our dignitaries that are here. Uh, first, let me recognize the uh, past recipients of the uh, Drum Major for Justice Award. Esther Bush, President and CEO of the Urban League of Greater Pittsburgh. The Honorable Kim Burke Clark, President and Judge of the Allegheny County Court of Common Pleas. Dr. Larry Davis, congratulations again. The Honorable Livingston Johnson, the Honorable Justin Johnson, Eric Springer, Tim Stevens, President of the NAACP Pittsburgh Chapter, and Paul Titus of the law firm of Schneider Harrison. Thank you for being here. I'd like to also recognize uh, several of our guests that are here today. Uh, Dignitaries from the legal profession and from our uh, elected officials. Uh, David Rayner, Executive Director of the Allegheny County Bar Association. <laughs> the Honorable Scott Brady, Vice, uh, the Honorable Scott Brady, U.S. Attorney for the Western District of Pennsylvania. Jim Brown, past president of the Allegheny County Bar Association. <laughs> Imogene Casey, vice president and general counsel of Seton Hill University. <laughs> Al Coffey, immediate past president of the Allegheny County Bar Association. <laughs> the Honorable Austin Davis, Pennsylvania House of Representatives. The Honorable Jeffrey Dowler, United States Bankruptcy Court for the Western District of Pennsylvania. The Honorable Rich Fitzgerald, Allegheny County Executive. Dan Fitzsimmons, Board of Governors of the Allegheny County Bar Association, District of Pennsylvania. <laughs> Representative Dan Frankel, Pennsylvania House of Representatives. Melanie Harrington, President and Chief Executive Officer of Iber for Pittsburgh. Nicola <laughs> Henry Taylor, Secretary of the Allegheny County Bar Association. <laughs> the Honorable Catherine M. Tirico, Allegheny County Court of Common Pleas. <laughs> the Honorable Mark Cornham, Chief Judge of the the United States District Court for the Western District of Pennsylvania. <laughs> Elliot Housie, Chief Public Defender of Allegheny County. <laughs> Jessica Lane, Deputy Chief of Staff for Mayor Bill Peduto. <laughs> John Connor Lamb, Congressman for the 17th District. Juan Lawrence, Chairman of the Board, 100 Black Men of Western Pennsylvania. <laughs> Jeff Mallory, Assistant Vice President, Diversity, Inclusion, and Student Advancement at Duquesne University. <laughs> the Honorable Cuban Goff, Court of Common Pleas of Allegheny County. <laughs> Lori McMaster, President elect of the Allegheny County Bar Association. Rabbi Hassan, Jeffrey Myers, Free of Life, World of Sinclair Congregation. <laughs> A.O.L. Richardson, Executive Director of Pittsburgh Community Services Incorporated. <laughs> Richard Stewart, President, NAACP Pittsburgh Chapter. <laughs> Chelsea Wagner, Allegheny County Controller. The Honorable Christine Ward, Administrative Judge, Civil Division of the Allegheny County Court of Common Pleas. 
Geodeth Washington, Senior Vice Chancellor and Chief Legal Officer at the University of Pittsburgh. Amy Bodegrove, Dean of the University of Pittsburgh School of Law. Regina Wilson, Board of Governors of Allegheny County Bar Association. Russell C. Tyler Oliver, Allegheny County Board of Governors. Stephen Sapala, Allegheny County District Attorney. I should have mentioned for first that Jennifer Andrade, uh, Assistant U.S. Attorney for the Western Thank District of the United States, uh, Western District of Pennsylvania, uh, and also the Vice Chair of the Allegheny County Foundation. And I'd like to give a special thank you to uh, President Ken Gormley, uh, President of Duquesne University. And Marie Mali Green, Dean of the Duquesne University School of Law. Thank you for being here and for bringing your students here to celebrate with us today. I'd also like to uh, thank uh, Coach Dan Burt and the uh, members of the uh, Duquesne women's basketball team, as well as Coach Keith Dan Burt uh, and uh, the team members from the Duquesne men's basketball team for being here as well. Hello, I am Chloe Ann Scales, and I am the secretary for the Home Branch Brown Division of the Allegheny County Bar Association. On behalf of the Home Branch Brown Division of the Allegheny County Bar Association, we thank you for being a part of our 20th annual Martin Luther King Day Prayer Breakfast Program. And we offer congratulations again to our distinguished awardees. The Homer Astronomy Division would like to give a special thanks to all of our dinner sponsors, our Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Washington and KDKA, all of our program participants, the program thanks to the participation in your program booklet, and the staff of the Allegheny County Bar Association who were instrumental in planning of this event. Reverend Dr. Vincent Campbell and the pastoral staff of Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church and Bistro to the At this time, I would like to leave you with some final thoughts as you depart today by concentrating on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy and the responsibility of us all to carry out his principles through our daily actions. Dr. King said, the urgency of the hour calls for leaders of wise judgment and sound integrity. Leaders not in love with money, but in love with justice. Leaders not in love with publicity, but in love with humanity. Leaders who can subject their particular egos to the greatness of the cause. So, with these words, I charge you all in those moments of fatigue from pursuing justice to ask yourself, if I do not stop to help others, what will happen to them? It is critical to society and to the betterment of us all that we continue to carry forth the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and to teach those who come after us to do the same. Thank you again to each and every one of you for your attendance and for making the 20th annual Martin Luther King Jr. Pray Breakfast a success. Reverend Dr. Vincent Campbell will now come forth to give the benediction. <laughs>
and also to other individuals who wanted to pass the recipient of this award. And certainly he's on the front lines uh, fighting the Hill District and the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, they been recognized by the White House and times past for his work. Uh, and that is Reverend Pastor Grayson and Attorney Grayson. <laughs> Thank you. 